I'm looking at King Ammon. And he is in 2 Kings chapter 21, starting in verse 19. Now, King Ammon is Manasseh's son. And, you know, Manasseh got right with the Lord at the end there when he got taken captive and completely turned things around. Now we're looking at his son Ammon. You know, in 2 Kings 21, 18, it says, And Manasseh slept with his fathers and was buried in the garden of his own house in the garden of Uzzah. And Ammon, his son, reigned in his stead. So instead of Manasseh, you got Ammon reigning. And Ammon was 20 and 2 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 2 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Meshulamith, the daughter of Haraz of Jotba. So Ammon was only 20 and 2 years old when he began to reign. You know what he should have done? He should have remembered his creator in the days of his youth. But you're going to see in verse 22 that he forsook the Lord God of his fathers and walked not in the way of the Lord. He treats God like some type of an imaginary friend. Maybe somebody he used to walk with, possibly. I'm not sure that he ever walked with him. But then when he got just a little bit older, maybe in them late teenage years, early 20s, he got rid of the Lord. You know, God's not an imaginary friend that you just have when you're little and you think, well, yeah, maybe God's real and maybe you talked about Jesus, maybe read some Bible stories and then you got rid of him when you got older. The Lord shouldn't be like that. You need to remember your creator in the days of your youth all the way up through adulthood. Remember your creator. He forsook, he forsakes the Lord. Ammon is 20 and 2 years old when he begins to reign. Very young. Ecclesiastes 12.1 is what he should have been going by. And he would have had Ecclesiastes 12.1 that Solomon wrote. And, you know, he would have brought his mother to shame. He would have had Proverbs 29.15. If you look at Proverbs 29 and verse 15, it says, The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. I guarantee you that Ammon brought Meshulamith to shame. And he would have been a heaviness to her. The way he was acting, the way he was reigning as king, if his mother was a good woman, he would have been a heaviness to her. In Proverbs 10.1, it says, The Proverbs of Solomon, A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is a heaviness of his mother. You know, Manasseh got right at the end of his reign. Ammon wasn't doing anything to make a glad father, to make Manasseh glad. He was doing things to be a heaviness to his parents. And you know, Hezekiah, remember him? Hezekiah would have been his grandfather. But even though Ammon has a crown, a physical crown on his head, he wasn't doing anything to get a crown for Hezekiah. In Proverbs 17, 6, it says, Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of children are their fathers. Children's children are the crown of old men. He wasn't a crown for Hezekiah, though. He was a heaviness. He was... Something that was just bringing sorrow to his parents. It says in verse 20, And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Just like most of the other kings, doing that which is evil in the sight of the Lord. Now, when you got saved, you are a king and a priest. It says, He has made us, made us unto our God kings and priests. So we need to be you know, if God was writing down a story about us like he's writing down about Ammon, 
Is it going to say, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord? Or is it going to be like what 1 Peter 3, 10 through 11 says, where it says, For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. it would your story say, he eschewed evil and did good. He s sought peace. Would it say that? Or is it going to say, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord? Because everything you're doing is in the sight of the Lord. You know, and Ammon's doing like father, like son. It says, and he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord as Manasseh, his father, did. Referring to most of Manasseh's reign where he was living wickedly. See, it's like father, like son. Manasseh humbled himself and repented. But Ammon doesn't follow these aspects of Manasseh's reign. You see, the children are going to be more inclined to follow your bad ways. They're going to be more inclined to do what they saw you do the most. So he did evil on the side of the Lord as his father Manasseh did, and he walked in all the way that his father walked in and served the idols that his father served and worshipped them. You see, Manasseh should have burned the idols like they did in Acts 19, 19. Check this out. Over in Acts 19 and verse 19, it says, Many of them which also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. You see, if you've got certain wicked books, CDs, whatever it may be, get rid of them and burn them. And you're just helping the word of God prevail. It's already prevailed anyway. But in your life, it's going to prevail. In your family, it's going to prevail even more. But Manasseh, it doesn't seem that he burned the idols. Because it says, And he walked in all the way that his father walked in and served the idols that his father served and worshipped them. So he's worshipping the same false idols that Manasseh did. You know, imagine getting saved. Imagine that you get saved and you just store your rock CDs in the basement. You store your pornography in some drawer somewhere or some wicked movies up in the attic and then your kids or your grandkids grow up and they and they find all that stuff in the attic in the basement and they start listening to it they start looking at it and they start getting off in the same besetting sin that you were in all because you didn't burn it now, what, would, what are your kids going to find in your basement? What are they going to find in your attic when you get up in years, when you pass away? Are they going to find a bunch of rock CDs you've put back, a bunch of wicked stuff you've put back, and then they're going to get that same wicked stuff, and it's going to defile them too? I don't want my kids finding that. When, when my kids, when I get older and my kids are cleaning out, my building, my attic, I want them to find all these papers that I've got Bible notes written on. I, I mean, that's what I got in my attic now. I got stuff in my attic, folders of notes about the Bible that I wrote down when I first got saved. And I got tons of just Bible resources everywhere. That's what I want them to find. I don't want them to find something that's going to be a stumbling block to them on, on down the road. So, Ammon must have went in the attic, went in the basement, found the idols, or had to go somewhere off somewhere and get the idols that Manasseh had cast out but hadn't burned. But it says he served the idols that his father served and worshipped them. And he forsook the Lord God of his fathers and walked not in the way of the Lord. 
He just forsook the Lord. He left him. He abandoned him. Treated God like some type of an imaginary friend that you grow out of. And the servants of Ammon conspired against him. So a conspiracy going on. And slew the king in his own house. In his own house. You see, you get away from the Lord like this, the Lord will allow it to allow things to start hitting home to you. And the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King Ammon. And the people of the land made Josiah his son king in his stead. Now Josiah is going to be a good king. And it says, Now the rest of the acts of Ammon, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? Yes, it is. Second Chronicles 33, 20 through 25, which we'll go to in a second. And he was buried in his sepulcher in the garden of Uzzah, and Josiah his son reigned in his stead. You see, he was only 22 years old and he began to reign. And I guarantee you, when he was 22 years old, taking that throne, getting that crown, he was not thinking about death. But here, just a few verses later, it doesn't say much about him. He obviously didn't do too much other than doing a bunch of evil. It says, and he was buried. Just like back there in Genesis 5, so-and-so was so-and-so years old, and he died. See, it doesn't matter how long you live, you're still going to die. Ammon died, and it doesn't say he ever got right. Most likely, he's in hell right now to this day. You know, Hebrews 9.27 says, And as it is appointed unto man, unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. You're going to die. You're going to be judged. You're going to go to heaven. You're going to go to, or you're going to go to hell. You know, you need to realize that life's moving a lot faster than you even realize. And you need to get right with the Lord now. Don't be like Ammon. You know, and if you're saved, don't be like Ammon and not get right with the Lord. Now look at Second Chronicles 33, and it, it gives us a little bit more information, but it's pretty much the same information. We'll go through and read it anyway. It says in Second Chronicles 33 and verse 20, So Manasseh slept with his fathers, and they buried him in his own house. And Ammon his son reigned in his stead. So Manasseh dies off. He had gotten right with the Lord at the end. But obviously didn't spend enough, enough time nailing it into Ammon's head. Most likely that he needs to follow the Lord. And it says, And Ammon was two and twenty years old when he began to reign. And he reigned two years in Jerusalem. But he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as did Manasseh his father. For Ammon sacrificed unto the carved images which Manasseh his father had made and served them. You see, these images that he was bowing down to his own father made. Think about that for a minute. Do you want your kids stumbling over stuff that you made, that you created, that you caused? You see, Manasseh got right at the end, but he spent so much time serving the devil, so much time making these idols, so much time serving the work of his own hands, his child Ammon ends up stumbling over these same carved images. Manasseh, like I said, should have destroyed the images. Look back here at Second Chronicles 33, 15. And he took away the strange gods. This is Manasseh. He took away the strange gods and the idol out of the house of the Lord and all the altars they had, that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord and in Jerusalem and cast them out of the city. Somehow, Ammon's getting all these carved images back, all these idols back, and he's serving them and worshiping them, Manasseh should have burned them. 
he should have never made them to begin with. You can't change the past, but you can at least try to burn it away. He made these carved images. In Second Chronicles 33, 7, and it, sa it says, And he set a carved image, the idol which he had made in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to Solomon his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. You see, Man Manasseh had made that carved image and put it in the house of the Lord. Even though he had gotten rid of it, got it out of his sight he didn't burn it out i reckon he's still it's still around and somehow ammon's got back a hold of it and now he's had these things as a stumbling block in his life and it says about ammon in verse 23 second chronicles 33 23 and humbled not himself before the lord as manasseh his father had humbled himself you see he's not He's only following the bad things. He's not following the good things about his father. So you need to be good all the way around in front of your kids from beginning to end. You know, they're just seeing you do bad and they're going to copy you like father, like son. They're always watching. It says... And humbled not himself before the Lord, as Manasseh his father had humbled himself. But Ammon trespassed more and more. To a point it's like, you know, in Isaiah 1, five, the Lord says to Israel, he says, Why should you be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. More and more. The whole head is sick and the whole heart faint. No matter how much he chastens them, they're just going to revolt more and more. Why even whoop them? They're just going to keep getting worse and worse, revolting more and more. And it says, And his servants conspired against him and slew him in his own house. But the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King Ammon. And the people of the land made Josiah his son king in his stead. Now, Josiah is going to be a breath of fresh air. And it's it's. It's crazy how Josiah can come from Ammon. And I'll give you some theories on why Josiah is a good son that comes from a bad father in the next lesson. So look forward to next time we're going to talk about in Second Chronicles 34, we're going to talk about King Josiah that does right in the sight of the Lord.